I'm Stacey Hendler Ross, and welcome to Democratic Television, a program the set of the Santa Clara County Democratic Party that brings insights, perspectives, and attitudes of our always thoughtful and democratic guests. Our focus today is raising the minimum wage in San Jose, and we have two guests, Professor Scott Myers Lipton of San Jose State University, and Saul Gonzalez, who is a star student of Professor <laughs> Lipton, and welcome to both of you for Thank coming you. to talk about this today. First, tell us a little bit about yourself. Saul, you are about to graduate San Jose State University. Yes, that's right. I'm about to graduate San Jose uh, State University with a um, major on sociology. Community change is my emphasis. I'm really excited, um, really glad uh -huh. we are, I'm at this stage of my life. Yeah. And you're from this area, grew up here and worked I actually, here? I grew up in Gilroy. Um, I, that's where I lived uh, ever since uh, we migrated, my family migrated to the, to the U.S. And I lived, I lived there ever since. And you're working full time as in addition to being a student? Correct. Yes. I actually am working with Catholic Charities as a program manager for the First Five Learning Together Initiative, um, which is in collaboration with other partner agencies. Great. So this project you're working on, them raising the minimum wage, goes right along with everything that you're interested in. Correct. And, and Catholic Charities also um, has cut poverty in half for, for the year 2012, which is one of their missions uh, statements as well. Our goal. Okay. And Professor Scott Myers Lipton, yeah, tell yeah. us a little bit about yourself. You're a professor of sociology at San Jose State. Yeah. I've been at San Jose State for 12 years. I grew up in San Jose. I went to high school here. And so uh, that's important for me because I feel like I can speak about the community and have some knowledge because this is where I grew up and was raised. Um, I did my doctorate at the University of Colorado and have been really interested in issues around poverty and, um, and inequality really since I was a professional tennis player and traveled the world and saw such vast disparity of wealth. And so when I came back home, I really wanted to do something that um, was meaningful in that area. I became a high school teacher um, for three or four years and then decided to pursue um, a master's and a PhD um, and really with a focus on kind of issues around poverty and inequality. And we're going to talk about your specific classes in just a minute, but yeah. first let's let people know what exactly the, the issue is here in raising the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. Currently it's $8 an hour in yeah. San Jose. That's right. You want to raise it $2 to $10 an hour. Mm -hmm. Why is that an important thing to do and why the $2 an hour? Why is it important to raise that minimum wage? So. so it is important because, as we know, uh, San Jose is the heart of Silicon Valley, or at least it's self-proclaimed to be the heart of Silicon Valley. And we know that Silicon Valley has one of the highest uh, cost of living. And $8 an hour is just simply not enough for families to be able to sustain themselves, uh, to be able to uh, cover cost of living as far as housing, uh, food, uh, gas, and other, other, other uh, miscellaneous expenses. Uh, so we know that two dollars may not uh, cut poverty or may not reduce, but it's an attempt. It's a progressive attempt uh, to move forward that minimum wage um, for San Jose residents. Now, how did you mm -hmm. come up with this idea? This was not something that yeah. just came off the top of your heads. I mean, you have mm -hmm. uh, a class. It's a yeah, social yeah. action yeah, class. That's right. Explain us. So it was actually it was about a year and a half ago, Maricela Chavez was in the class, a student. We had been reading about 43 different poverty solutions. One was on living wage. She was in that class, and she got very inspired by that in a class on poverty and wealth. So the next semester, about a year ago, she and Saul was in that class. It was a class on social action, and the focus of that class is to actually choose a policy that the students are uh, passionate about and then try to implement that policy. And so they chose this idea of increasing the minimum wage. Gas at the time, which I just saw in the paper, it's getting too close to that, about $4 a gallon. Uh, and so that is about half of what the minimum wage is. It's $8, of course, as we know. It's a state, um, it's a state mandate. Uh, the federal minimum wage is a little bit lower at seven twenty-five. What are the jobs that are paying minimum wage in this valley? Yeah, yeah. What what kinds of jobs are, are people working at where they're making the minimum wage? Well, first of all, a lot of our students are just impacted. So where are they working? You know, uh, they're working at uh, restaurants, pay minimum wage. Um, for, you know, jobs in a lot of some nonprofits are paying minimum wage. Some. Um, other the jobs that I'm thinking about are what are some of them? Some that you know. Actually, uh, even the uh, the library or the student center yeah, at San Jose right. State is paying minimum wage. Yeah, you know, tellers are made on our campus. You know, we have several students that are making about minimum wage at that. But at this job. is not an issue that just affects students, yeah, yeah. right? I mean, right. and even yeah, at San Jose State University, you have students where the average age yeah. is 26, 27, where they may right. have families, and then they, Absolutely. you know, they're sort of on their own. 
But it doesn't just affect students, so what do people yeah. need to know about that? Yeah, yeah. I'd say, you know, in, in San Francisco, which has passed um, a similar measure, and actually we got a lot of inspiration in the class, the students were in this 164 social action class, they were doing the research around that, and they found that San Francisco had increased their minimum wage, as well as Santa Fe now. So San, San Francisco is at 1024, mm -hmm. Santa Fe is about to jump to 1029, mm -hmm. the highest in the nation. And one of the main jobs that they've, that has really helped was in restaurants, that restaurants are a job that are paying about minimum wage cooks, uh, people, you know, not just the waiters, but people who are serving are making, so a, a, a lot of the jobs in the taquerias and those kind of, that kind of work, as well as some of the big, some of the big chains are paying, you know, close to minimum wage too. So it's going to help, we think, tens of thousands of people. And it also, if you're, it's not going to just bump up the people at the bottom from eight to 10, but the people that are making nine fifty and 10 will also get a bump up too as the minimum wage increases. So it actually lifts the floor. And so for a minimum wage worker, it's going to put an extra $4,000 into their pocket. And so when we're talking about cutting poverty, we all know that it's not a living wage. You know, living wage uh, has been seen about 1651 for Silicon Valley. So mm -hmm. we know we're not that. And so we're asking for a reasonable rate increase. Right. We haven't had a rate increase since uh, 2008. This is ours in California is not COLA in comparison to Nevada, which is COLA. That's why they're at 825. Or uh, Oregon, which is at 880 an hour for the state or Washington State at 904, so all colon. All of the sur surrounding states of California, the point you just That's made right. is that they have higher minimum That's wages. Right. Right. Let's get, kind of get back yeah, to yeah. your classroom experience. You're going to be graduating soon, but when you started in this and majored in sociology and took these classes, did you expect to get in this involved in a real-world uh, activity, a real world project. I mean, this came as an idea in class, and all of a sudden now you're out c collecting signatures to get it on the November ballot. Correct. And to be honest with you, yes, we were inspired. We were so eager to do something that was meaningful, that was that created change in our communities, our, in our societies, that um, we actually thrived on that energy and made it happen. So yes, it was a simple idea that came about just to say, hey, you know what? There's you know, there's social problems out there, there's poverty, there's homelessness, there's malnutrition. But the underlying, I guess, common uh, commonality or commonology uh, between all of these social problems was the fact that the economic disparity was a huge impact. So the, we wanted to create something meaningful, something world changing, not only for ourselves and not only for the students, but also for the general public. How did you go about the research getting mm -hmm. ready for this project? Well, go ahead, do you want to see? So yes, we actually uh, we did a lot of research. We actually found out that we weren't the only ones within the nation trying to uh, bump up the minimum wage. Or oh, um, so we went about reading different studies that gave us insight as to what were some misconceptions of you know the general public. What happens if you say oh, there's going to be a minimum wage increase? Oh, that's going to decrease jobs, or it's going to you know a lot of businesses are going to go out because they can't afford their employees. Let's, let's talk about that. What did you learn about that? What are the those so those are the misconceptions, and what are your arguments against it? Because business is going to say. Well, if I have to pay people more, then I might as well do business in Campbell or Santa Clara, where I don't have to pe pay people that much. Right. Or in the chamber, in the San Jose Chamber of Commerce, Silicon Valley Chamber mm -hmm. of Commerce, they say well, we prefer to to have this this issue on a statewide basis. Mm -hmm. Let's make it fair for everyone in the state. Kick it up to that. What 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 are your arguments against that? Well, the reality is that once if I'm making minimum wage and I get two dollars. Um, usually, I would be you know a lot of debt or wanting to purchase a big ticket item, maybe a car that would help me to be some be more self sufficient. So the reality is, if you pump more money back into the economy, the, that money is going to go back into the local businesses that in turn are going to create more business for them. Um, so yes, it might seem like a hardship that they're going to have to pay their employees two dollars ad additional. But the reality is that that money is coming back to them and it's going to create more businesses. So people who couldn't afford to go at a diner, for example, uh, or at a pizza parlor to purchase a $20 pizza because that would be outrageous for their income, 
um, maybe this would alleviate and maybe, maybe allow them to go and give them a little bit more of that business. And, th and that's what the studies have found. I mean, the studies up at the Cal University of California, Berkeley, there's been economists looking at what has been the impact, because there's great interest on what's happening in San Francisco with now at 1024 an hour. And how what's long been, has that been there? It's been today? five years, six years now. So it, it was passed in 2004 for actually now seven years. So what's so happened? What, what the researchers said is that three things they found, negligible impact on business. So it has not decreased unemployment like the chamber and other folks said it was going to hurt businesses it actually San Francisco has the third lowest unemployment in the state with the highest um, minimum wage in the country so that argument hasn't found, been held to be true the other was it decreased economic inequality that was the second thing they found the gap which is now you know that's what Occupy movement is talking about it's what's been brought to you know this attention that there's this great gap between the poorest and the and the wealthiest that that decreased through an increase in the minimum wage to 1024. So that's the second thing they learned. And the third was, actually, as Lulu was saying, well, third and fourth, one is that workers actually stayed longer in their jobs because they were getting paid a few dollars more, and so there was less need to go look for another job. So that was, they, they, it decreased costs for businesses. And fourth, it pumped money back into the economy and stirred and stimulated the economy economy. So really four positive reasons. And I think for us, I think the San Jose Mercury had it right. They said when they put the headline above when the students announced that they were going to do this minimum wage campaign about a month ago when we made it public, they said reasonable pay. We're asking for reasonable pay. Mm -hmm. We're not asking for mm -hmm. something that's outrageous that, that would destroy businesses because we obviously, we eat at the stores. We want them to be there in the, in the, in the pizzerias and the taquerias. We don't want to put them out. We want to go to those businesses, but we also want to be able to put gas in our tank. We also want to pay tuition for our students, which has doubled since 2008, 2007. It's doubled, but no cost of living increase on the minimum wage. So we're going to take a break in just a, few, in just a minute, but I want yeah. to get out... You need help collecting signatures. You yeah. need 19,000 yeah. signatures. Let's get some information out there about what people out there can do to support you. Yeah, yeah. They can go to your Facebook page. Yeah. So raise, it? raise. The, it's called Raise the Wage San Jose. You can go to that Facebook account and find out information about how to get in touch with us and the students and the other community organizations. We're, we're every Saturday and Sunday, the community is invited to come out with us. And you need people to help collect signatures yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Correct. And yes. you need money to sort of <laughs> raise, I mean, for any political campaign, you yeah. need some money to try and buy signage and yep. things like that. Okay, right. so we're going to take a Look break forward. and we'll be back in uh, just a minute. Hi, I'm Santa Clara County Supervisor Dave Cortezzi, and one of the things that people ask me all the time is, how can I get involved? How can I make a difference? I have people contact me, constituents, who say, I'm ready to be involved more with my community. What do you recommend? Well, one of the things I would recommend is getting involved with the local Democratic Party. Uh, it's not only something that you can and should do as a Democrat, but it can be something very inspiring. Um, this is the party uh, that stands up for people most in need and they can certainly use your help. As an elected official, I know that. As a de democratic activist in my own right, um, I know that you can make a difference by being involved, by being involved on a day-to-day -day basis uh, with our local Democratic Party. Want to know how to contact them? Do it by phone, 408-445-9500. Or go to their website, www.sccdp.org your local Democratic Party, a great place to get involved. Welcome back. We're talking about uh, raising the minimum wage in San Jose, and I'm here with San Jose State University Professor Scott Myers Lipton and sociology student Saul Gonzalez, who is working on this campaign. We want to talk a little bit about who your opposition is here. It's good for working people yeah. to be able to make a little bit more money to survive. And we were just a minute ago, we were talking about certain families that work two or three jobs because that's what it takes to survive and pay bills and pay for gas and pay for rent, et cetera, in this particular area of the country. How do you convince someone that we need to, we need to raise the minimum wage? And who is who would be opposed to this? Well, for the average worker that makes a minimum wage, there isn't a lot of convincing that needs to happen. Would you like more money? Yes. 
you know, that definitely it translates to being able to pay the mortgage or being able to pay the rent, being able to do, uh, be self-sufficient with their food, with other living expenses. Uh, the opposition, though, um, as we talked earlier, might be some of the business owners that are afraid um, to, you know, share their wealth or share their income, um, which is all income that it's pretty much to, to their pockets, um, being, uh, being never share that wealth with their employees. Right. You wanted to make a, a point about the Chamber of <clears throat> Commerce. Is that, you think well, the, Chamber of, the Chamber of Commerce is saying, okay, but we really prefer that we want to have this on a statewide basis. What's the problem yeah, with that? Yeah, so I would say twofold. One is that the research shows that when some research has been done back east where they looked at two states, one had a higher minimum wage and the others didn't, and there were, there were two cities right by each other, there wasn't the job loss that there was, that, the, that they would say, oh, they're going to leave this community to go right across the state border to that community uh, because the minimum wage was higher here. So it, it, didn't, it didn't show that. In fact, there was more economic growth in the city that had the higher minimum wage. So it goes along with what earlier argument is. If you put more money, uh, a bit more money, and, I, and again, we're not asking for you know, what, the, what the true living wage is, which is $16 an hour, which, by the way, when we did a poll, and you, you said, yeah, would you ask the average citizen, would you want more money? You know, of course, the answer is yes. But San Josean said this around the eight to ten dollars, and I think it's really important that that the community knows that we're putting this forward because the people of San Jose said overwhelmingly that they wanted an eight to ten dollar increase when the poll was done of six hundred four likely two thousand and twelve voters. I mean, here we are in an election year when we were asked them six hundred four voters would they support overwhelming support. And that's not just in the, in the city of San Jose, but it's also mm -hmm. a national issue. Two thirds of, of Americans now support an eight to $10 increase in the minimum right. wage, a poll that just came out. So I think it's important for, um, and by the way, they did not support, San Joseans didn't support, when we asked them about the 1651, they didn't support that. So, because that they felt that was too, too, too much. So it would you hurt did too much your, the, you did your research, yeah. as the students did, you did right. a lot of research on this before you came up with this as a plan. That's right. right. And so some of that research kind of looked into what was the actual amount that would be needed if, in order for them to be self-sufficient. And again, like Scott said earlier, uh, the livable wage for Santa Clara County, for City of San Jose, would be seven, uh, 1640, uh, which is obviously way high. And we, we knew that if we were going to go out to the ballot and say, hey, you were going to do a jump from 8 to 16, which is double the minimum wage currently, people would oppose to that because it would just be a drastic change. So yeah. what's your strategy now? You have yeah. to collect 19,100 signatures to That's get right. this on the ballot in uh, November. That's right. What's the strategy? What do you have to do between now yeah. and then? So for the student organization, uh, Cafe J, which is a Campus Alliance for Economic Justice, we're also, we're aligning ourselves with other campuses around the city of San Jose, Evergreen, and National Hispanic University uh, to also get their support and their volunteer work so they can help us spread the word and also get some more signatures. And the other thing is we're reaching out to community groups. I was in a meeting of community organizations yesterday um, and asking them to collect a couple of thousand that they would make, you know, this community organization would, would make a commitment to collect a thousand. Some said, I collect 500, you know, their community organization. Some said 2,500. Great, that's going to help us get to that goal of really, and it's 19,161, we want 30,000 plus because we want to make sure this gets on the ballot. And it's going to go through that collecting through April. So, you know, if you're seeing this, we'd love to have you come out Let's and help Let's remind people how yeah. they can help. And you have a, a Facebook page, yeah, yeah. That, which is? Yeah, it's called Raise the Wage San Jose. So, so Facebook slash Raise the Wage San Jose. And that's where people can go to find some information about the latest right. of what's happening and to, to, to volunteer. I mean, basically, it's a grassroots campaign. Right. You'd be knocking on doors, standing in parking lots, please sign this. You know, during campaign season, we see, like I was at yes. Safeway a few weeks ago, there was a guy with a table with six petitions, six different yeah. issues. Please sign these. And yep. so, you know, you have to read everything. Yeah. I think, How, what I think do you yeah. Do? I think one, one of the exciting parts is that, you know, we're going to have some of that where it's, you know, folks out at, I mean, out in the community. You know, the, th during the week, you're going to see a lot of it on campuses. And then Saturday and Sundays, we're going to meet every, uh, so people are in, in March and April come to the Labor Council. We're going to be there at 10 a.m. And we're going to be going out 
um, to, the, to high traffic areas within San Jose and to community events and asking people if they're residents because only people who are, I actually have it right here, Registered you know, this is, this, is the, this is the petition. It's for, uh, you know, for the measure. They have to sign it. They have to be registered voters. Um, if they're not registered, we can register them right there so they can register the vote and then, which is a, which is a great experience for the students to actually get young and, you know, older mm -hmm. folks to actually become registered voters and then they sign the petition if they are um, a resident, a citizen of, of San Jose. It has to be in San Jose. Yes, and right. so, um, so yeah, so that's what we're, we're doing. We're, we're hopefully in the next several months get 30,000 signatures and then in, throughout the summer and then in the fall, we'll be doing the campaign. And so there'll be a lot of work in doing what you're saying, door to door, putting up signs right. saying raise the wage to $10 in And that's Saturday. when you're going to need some of the money as well that's right. to right. run a campaign. Yeah. Um, how, how do the students that you talk about who are, or that you talk to who are not necessarily in your classes mm -hmm. as aware of civic <clears throat> issues as you are, how do they react when you tell them about this particular issue? Well, they're always thrilled. They're like, oh, great, yes, we, this directly impacts me. Yes, let me sign it. Uh, the issue that we have had been having lately is that most of the students at San Jose State are from abroad, so they're not necessarily registered voters within the city of San Jose. So that is a, a huge deterrent from them signing the petition. Uh, but they're, they're more than willing to. They're like, you know what, if it weren't because I was registered in Santa Barbara, if I was registered you know, uh, in L.A. or whatever, awesome. then I would definitely sign it. Um, but it's, it's, they're all for it. Um, they're really excited that something like this is actually happening yeah. and, and, and that we're actually, uh, it's student-led too, so they also feel the pride. That's what the interesting thing is about. I mean, so many people talk about the apathy of young people and they're not as active <clears throat> in political <throat> campaigns <throat> and they're not as well-informed about what's going on. Then you're really showing a yeah. different side of that of students who do yeah. know what's going on and <laughs> who are interested in making those changes. <laughs> Yeah. I think more and more, uh, as, especially with the recession and all these social problems, it's and also the tuition hike, uh, it's hard not to be aware of your social environment. Um, social issues are a big part of our today's, you know, day to day. So we have to be involved. And I think, you know, we're behind a sign for President Obama and people are asking, where, where's the Obama youth? And so a lot of our students were very active in that Obama youth surge of, of putting him toward the president, mm -hmm. presidency. And so I think when you ask, where, where are the, where are the, you know, is the interest, are they going to be alienated? But what's powerful is that these students who were committed to Obama and the change that he talked about are all involved in this minimum wage campaign and giving voice I think importantly to what Occupy was talking about this economic and injustice mm -hmm. and I think that's the, the powerful part is that they're having just regular folks right we're regular folks who are having an influence on the democratic process on the political process which a lot of times we can feel somewhat alienated from and so I think this is a great grassroots campaign it'll be historic it's the first time in San Jose that the city clerk has said that a grassroots group has ever led a measure like this so we're making history in San Jose I remind the students that's all the fantastic. time that, that that's you know that's important and I think I, I want to say one thing about the, the chamber the chamber had said the Chamber of Commerce had has been responding to some of you know uh, the students in, in, in the papers and they're saying they want to do it regionally on a statewide basis Tell, I'll be the first one to join the campaign with them to work on a statewide, cam statewide campaign to raise the minimum wage. But the reality is when Assemblymember Alejo raised an 850 minimum wage, the Chamber of Commerce was not a supporter of, of, that, mm -hmm. uh, of that issue. So I think if you look at it, if you, get, if you say that, then when, the, when it comes up to, up to the, um, the Capitol, then you got to be with us on that because I'm I, I kind actually, of putting your money yeah, where your mouth I'm, is. I'm willing to work with the chamber. I would yeah. love to work with the chamber on that net on a statewide issue. In fact, I challenged President Obama. He promised in 2008 to raise the minimum wage up to 950. I'd love to see President Obama come to San Jose and look at our students and hit the Obama youth and say, I'm going to make good on that promise of mm -hmm. raising the minimum wage to 950. And that was in 2008. Right. Now we've had cost of living going up. You know, our, our, our tuition has doubled at San Jose State. Come and let's say raise the minimum wage. Two thirds of, San, of, the, of Americans support it. So this, I think this movement in San Jose has huge implications. How for, much are you trying to get, get support, active support for it outside the university then because of that, those implications? Well, I think we're, we're talking, as, as and, and, and we just got to mention in the Huffington Press, the, our campaign. So as I think, as this word gets out that there is a minimum wage drive, there's going to be a lot of attention 
about particularly this, you know, I think because of the Occupy movement and bringing it to our attention, economic justice, there's going to be a lot of focus. And going back also to, to the Chamber of Commerce, you know, Silicon Valley, they say, you know, it shouldn't be San Jose, but Silicon Valley is a leader in the world. And we lead the world in technology. We have this incredible wealth. Why can't we pay in, in, as a leader of the world, but also not just in technology, but in economic policy, in justice questions? We should lead the world there, too. So I really challenge the chamber to not oppose us, but actually work with us to have a, a, a bottom of the, uh, the minimum wage that's a reasonable. So I, 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 we'd love to work with the chamber. Well, maybe they'll, <laughs> maybe they'll come, on, come around. Yeah. Um, this has been really interesting to talk to both of you yeah. about this, and good luck. We want to give a, one more reminder for people who may want to help with this campaign to check out their Facebook page. It's sort of the way things are these days. You go to Facebook, Twitter, yep. um, Raise the Wage San Jose on Facebook, and they can get information they need. You need lots of help collecting signatures. You need money. You need everything a, a political campaign needs. And I wish you all the best of luck Thank with this. Thank you so much. So Thank you. We appreciate it. Thanks for having us here. Thank you very much for talking pleasure. about this today. So thank you all for watching. This is um, for watching Democratic TV, and we're talking about the raising the minimum wage. Again, this is going to be, this is an effort to try and get the initiative on the ballot in November. So uh, keep, keep a watch out for more information on this campaign and for uh, any opportunities that you can uh, do to help uh, for this particular campaign. Thank Thanks you, so Scott Myers-Lipton and Saul Gonzalez for joining us. Hello, I'm Congressman Mike Honda. I represent District 15, which is commonly called Silicon Valley. Benjamin Franklin once said, if you're willing to give up a little bit of liberty for a little bit of security, he deserved neither. Today, we are faced as a nation a choice between civil liberties and security. The answer is we don't have to choose one over the other. If you believe that, Please join us here at the Democratic TV and call us at 408-445-9500. Thank you.